Hello everybody, DSP here, and welcome to Ask the King. I believe this is episode 43. Forgive me if I got that wrong, I'm almost positive this is episode 43. And this is a momentous occasion for two reasons, okay? The first reason is because as of the end of today, I will be the proud homeowner of a new home, 1,600 or so square feet, out in uh, Washington State. After two months of work, finally today it is all coming to fruition. The final paperwork is submitted. I'm getting a, you know, being told it's being approved. And my real estate agent should be swinging by to pick up the keys because I'm not moving there uh, initially. I actually have to wait because there's all this work coming up, right? Think about all the new games and stuff coming up in the next few weeks. Think about E3. It's going to be out of control. So I knew I wouldn't be able to move there immediately because of my work schedule. However, I'm excited, I'm pumped, and I want to say to start this episode of Ask the King, thank you to everyone out there who gave me support, everyone out there who put up with all the trials and tribulations of this home owning and purchasing process. I know there were a lot of times when I got phone calls and emails and interruptions and my breaks between streams were longer. Thank you to everyone who was considerate for that. As of today, it's all paid off, okay? Now, that being said, what I want to preempt this episode of Ask the King with is to let you guys know that around mid-June I'll be moving over to Washington State. I want to do an episode of Ask the King next month, absolutely. In about one month's time, that last week of June, I would love to do another episode of Ask the King from the new place. I'm sure once people see the new place, they're going to have tons of questions about it, right? However, I can't guarantee you that that's going to happen because we're going to have to get all the stuff moved in, all the stuff hooked up, working. Who knows if things will get broken in, trans in, in movement and in transition. That thing kinds of ha tends to happen when you do especially a long move like I'm going to be doing. Um, in addition to that, I don't know what the internet, how long is it going to take for the internet to be up and running. I'm hoping the internet is fast enough to do everything I want to do. It's supposed to be from what I've seen, but again, no guarantees. Who knows what's going to happen? It's going to be the wild frontier when I'm out there for a couple weeks until I get everything set up and working. But the good news is I do want to continue Ask the King and I will be doing it if I can that final week of June. I've already on the forums on the kingofhate.com posted up ton, or, or, uh, not tons, uh, a, a big thread already for the next episode. Put your questions in there. Let's get a bunch in there. So whenever I do get around to doing the episode, I can do it right away and have the questions and I have to keep reminding everyone, please post up, okay? So, that being said, I've got over 30 questions for this episode of Ask the King, some of which are gaming related, some of which are move related, some of which, you know, there's a lot of variety this month because there's so much going on in my life, in the gaming world, in other people's personal lives and they just want... Advice, and I said this on the pre-stream, and I'll say it again. I want to say, I love this show because this lets me know that you guys care about what I think. And that's a great feeling to know that there are people out there in the world that want to hear my opinions, my voices, my, my advice on things. You know, the, one of the worst things that could ever happen is that you're a person who you feel like you're insignificant. No one cares about what you think. No one cares about that. This is an awesome show, and I hope that I can bestow some entertainment as well as some advice maybe some life lessons to you guys with the answers that I give to these questions. So, that all being said, without further ado, let me get started. Being that I have so many questions, I'm going to try to make this show at around two hours long, if not shorter. I'd love to do shorter than that. I'm going to split it around every 30 minutes. This It'll have a little commercial break in between. So if you're watching on YouTube, you can just skip to the next part. If you're watching on Twitch, please be patient. I'll be back after a few minutes after I rest my voice. Talking for two hours straight nonstop is, is a little taxing, okay? Okay. So that being said, let's get started because we got a ridiculous amount of questions to get to, all right? First question for this episode of Ask the King comes from Kikon. And Kikon asks the following. He says, now that you've confirmed that you're moving to Seattle, what major conventions in the area do you think that you'll be able to attend? Usually when you vlog conventions, they're a lot of fun and seeing some, uh, some more of these in the near future would be a blast for sure. Well, it's a great question, Kikon, because previous years, some conventions that I've attended or considering attended were things like MAGFest, Too Many Games, New York Comic Con, and most recently last year we attended SGC down in Texas. Now this year I knew it was going to be different because I knew I was going to be trying to move out of Connecticut. So I knew that number one, most of my money 
and effort was going to be going towards that move. And I knew I wasn't going to have all this disposable income to be dumping in things left and right. If you remember last year, I spent a shit ton of money upgrading all my equipment to do live streaming, buying multiple sets of headphones to try to find the right one for console gaming and, and, and headphone live streaming gaming, direct capture, that kind of stuff. We went to SDC. We spent a ton of money. I went and did a bunch of travel. Not doing that this year. This year, I said I have to conserve. I have to realize that my money needs to be spent on smart things. So this year is far different than previous years. Now, the good news is, yes, because I am moving near Seattle, Washington, Seattle is a hotbed for conventions, including, just off the top of my head, PAX Prime, which is the main PAX convention that they have, Penny Arcade Expo, Emerald City Comic Con, one of the biggest Comic Cons in the United States. In fact, I think it ties... I think it's similar to New York Comic Con. It's nowhere near as big as San Diego, but it's still pretty big. Um, there's... I, I, I don't know if it's called Sakura Con or if it's something else. There's an anime, a big anime convention that traditionally happens. And then there's other more specific events that usually are Nintendo or Microsoft related because their headquarters are located in Seattle as well. So... Now that I'm going to become a Seattle resident, well, I take that back because I'm living on the outskirts of Seattle, so let me change that, my, that phrasing. Now that I'm going to become a Washington State resident near Seattle, those are going to be the conventions that I'm going to be frequenting. I mean, they're literally going to be a 45-minute drive away from me, so why the hell wouldn't I attend those conventions? Now, when I say attend, you have to understand what I'm talking about. These are not smaller-style gaming conventions where they're trying to feature YouTubers. No. These are huge-scale, giant events that are, you know, humongous. They don't have that kind of stuff. It's more for these companies to come and promote their products, to sell stuff, for you to meet and greet with comic book artists, movie stars, wrestlers, and get autographs and do that kind of, attend panels with these kind of people and stuff like that. This is way bigger scale than the stuff that I have attended in the past. So I am not, by any means, saying that I am attending to be a guest or to have a panel. It'll never, never happen. Never, never on this planet will I get into my foot in the door to one of those places. Unless I get signed to do a freaking TV deal tomorrow, okay? So that being said, I am looking to be an attendee, a regular attendee of those conventions. And yes, vlogging them, showing you guys everything that we see at these conventions, the things that I buy, the people that we may run into... That's the goal, and I can't tell you definitively when this is going to begin because here's the bottom line. I need to move to my new house, get everything situated in the new house so that I can do my work first off. Then I need to start working about furnishing the house. The living room needs to get, you know, the TV mounted, needs a, t a couch, needs this. It's going to take weeks, if not months, to get everything the way it needs to be for it to be livable, okay? Once all that's done, then I'm going to focus on that other stuff. I need to focus, the primary thing is getting the house set up, living there, and then starting to, working on selling this condo in Connecticut. Then I worry about the periphery stuff, like attending a new convention and stuff like that. So it's coming, it's great news for everyone, but it's not going to happen overnight like that, okay? Okay, up next, this question is from Sultan of Swing, which I'm wondering if that means the Sultan of Swing, which I don't know if that has anything to do with wrestling or the King of Swing, uh, I don't know. I have no idea, but that's his name. Here's his question. He says, Hey, Phil, ever since the Nintendo 64, it seems like Nintendo has been going in, a, in an ongoing downward spiral, losing money and faith the longer that they stay in their old ways. Do you think that this is due to the lack of variety in adult-oriented games that they release for their consoles? Pretty much every game that they release is okay, but they're not really seeming to release any games aimed at adults or hardcore gamers, just at their longtime fans and existing series. They tried to do something like this with Zombie U, but it failed. And let's be honest, Zombie U was not a very good game. That's why it failed. But it's okay to fail. Your top three games of last year were all mature, rated 17 plus games, including The Last of Us, Grand Theft Auto V, and Bioshock Infinite. Do you think that to save their company, that Nintendo should make new IPs aimed at adults and not just things like Mario, Zelda, Donkey Kong, Pokemon, and the things that they usually put out every year. Um, here's the thing. I agree that what it seems has happened with Nintendo is this. If you follow the history of Nintendo, you can very much see what's happened. In the 1980s, Nintendo became the definitive home console because they ended up porting a lot of popular arcade games. Most people don't know this, but games like Super Mario Brothers... Um, and a lot of the, the first generation games that were on the Nintendo Entertainment System were actually arcade games that were ported to the system and played very similarly to the arcade games. A lot of people don't know that. That's the God's honest truth. 
then what Nintendo decided to do is they said, well, we have this popular console. Let's make our own original series. Don't worry about just porting what everyone else has done. Let's make our own first-party original games. And that was the era of the burgeoning of new stuff, things that was coming out, such as the Zeldas, the, you know, Donkey Kong, and then being brought into the new generation of Donkey Kong. Then you have the next generation of, of Nintendo consoles. Let's go ahead with Pokemon on the Game Boy. How about Kirby? How about, you know... Donkey Kong Country, Star Fox, all right? I'm naming all these things that are synonymous with Nintendo. They're first-party characters that they've stuck with over the years and have made them a shit ton of money and pretty much are always bestsellers. <clears throat> but then what ended up happening is Nintendo went against the grain. When everyone else was going towards, we want to go towards more mature, adult-rated games. We want to go more towards the disc-based format, not more cartridges like Nintendo was doing still in the late 90s. Nintendo wanted to do their own thing. And admittedly, if you are the top dog, if you're the company that's synonymous with gaming for a decade, you probably think you have the leeway to do that. You have the clout to do that. At that point, people were saying, not video games, they actually said Nintendo games. That's how synonymous the name Nintendo was with video games. Okay? But what Nintendo decided to do was completely take a move in the opposite direction of where technology was going. Technology was going three, full 3D, full polygons, no more 2D pixelated you know, art. It's all poly polygonal, going more high resolution, higher storage capacity on the disc, voice acting, which for the first time, stereo CD quality music for the first time. And Nintendo really struggled with the Nintendo 64 to stay with that standard because the cartridge format was outdated and it was incredibly hard to develop for at that point. So Nintendo took a hit there. Then the next generation, oh, well, we're going to make the GameCube and it's going to have discs, but it's going to be these little rinky-dink discs. And yeah, it's going to have, you know, high-resolution graphics. Oh, but we're going to have this fucking controller that looks like it belongs with PlaySchool. You know, like a play school controller that a kindergartner would use. And again, they wanted to do their own thing. They wanted to go their own way. Sometimes it works for Nintendo. If you look at their history with the handheld market, the Game Boy, the Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color before the Game Boy Advance, the, the Nintendo DS, the Nintendo uh, 3DS, they've all been incredibly uh, successful and they're all different. You know what I mean? They all had some kind of innovation that made them different from the previous generation. For handhelds, it worked for Nintendo. It hasn't worked on the console market, okay? And what's ended up happening here, throughout the years, since we went from the GameCube to the Wii and now the Wii U, Nintendo unfortunately doesn't know what to do anymore, so what they're doing is sticking with what they know. Well, we know that Mario will sell. We know that Zelda will sell. Donkey Kong. Uh, you know, all these first-party characters, Mario, uh, they're sticking around because they really feel that that is their lifeblood. And to some extent, that's true if you're talking about the hardcore Nintendo fan base, but the question now that's that's appallingly apparent to Nintendo is that guess what? Your hardcore Nintendo fan base dissipated in the early 2000s and went with PlayStation. Eventually they went on to the Dreamcast and then to Xbox. They went to the other formats that had the modern technology, the higher storage capacities, online play, controllers that were comfortable for the hands. You, They lost a ton of their hardcore fan base during that period of time because they were just doing whatever the fuck they wanted and they had their fingers in their ears and didn't want to listen to what the entire industry was telling them they were supposed to be evolving to. And now what's happened is you've got a Wii U console that's severely outdated. You've got next-gen consoles that are all better than the Wii U technology-wise and online play-wise. A controller that is a laughing stock of the gaming community. Because, let's face it, what third-party developer wants to fucking develop a game that works with this? None. You want a game that you can port to every console easily. No one cares about this fucking thing. It's a waste of time and money. And the bottom line is the games that implement it don't even implement it that well anymore. So this was also a failed experiment, right? And then you've got the fact that as, uh, as Sultan of Swing has said, that Nintendo really can't get third-party support anymore at all. No one wants to port their popular games to Wii U because the Wii U didn't sell. So Nintendo was like triple fucked, right? So it, if Nintendo all of a sudden started designing first party adult oriented games, could they possibly snag a new audience? Absolutely. If there was a great survival horror game and a great adult oriented game over here and a great game here and here, and there were multiple ones, they could possibly snag that audience. The problem is, think about the games that have come out. All right, Mad World was an adult-oriented game for the Wii. Name another one that was Wii-exclusive that you needed to buy on the Wii that was like a must-buy. 
and you're going to have, think, few and far between besides maybe No More Heroes, what else was there? And that was the problem. It seems like Nintendo was so worried about just selling shovelware during the Wii era that everyone just said, fuck Nintendo, we're going to move on to consoles that treat us seriously. Sure, I'll go back to Nintendo if I want to play Mario, but outside of that, I don't care anymore about Nintendo, and that's what happened. So even if Nintendo were to make new first-party titles that were adult-oriented, they'd have to make a ton of them to try to win that audience back. And that's the problem that Nintendo is in. And that's why you're hearing all these rumors. Nintendo's going into the mobile gaming market. Nintendo's going into a new console. They're going to be... Yeah, because the, what can you do to save the Wii U when all that's coming out for it is literally first-party Nintendo titles, you know? Sure, Smash Brothers will sell some consoles. Absolutely. Smash is a great series. Mario Kart 8 will sell some consoles. Absolutely. But when you look at the, the first-party titles worth playing on Nintendo's Wii U, can you fill two hands... You know what I mean? Mario, uh, which is 3D World, the two Mario games, which are uh, Mario and, and Luigi, the two ones that they had last year, probably Rayman Legends, even though, oops, wait, that's available on everything else, so forget that, that doesn't count. Donkey Kong Country Returns, Pikmin 3. Um, I mean, what else are the first party bestsellers on that console right now? You know, we got stuff coming up. Like I said, Mario Kart, Smash Brothers, Bayonetta will be coming out. And it's like, okay, and there's a few others, like Wonderful 101, but that didn't sell well. Even for people who own the console, that didn't even sell well. So, I don't know what Nintendo can do. People keep asking me this question. I don't have the answers. I just know that Nintendo has basically, by completely ignoring the world around them and thinking they knew better, they fucked themselves. And, yes, everyone says, oh, but Nintendo has five bajillion dollars, right? That they could bleed money like this for 20 years and they'll be fine. Don't listen to anyone who says that. Because if you work in the business world, you understand that when your company is bleeding money, you cannot operate like that. It doesn't matter if you have enough surplus money for 20 years. You cannot bleed your company to zero. You need to find a way to turn it around. I love these business analysts. But they could bleed money for the next 25 years. Yeah. And they'll lay everyone off and they'll sell no games and the company will go out of business. No. They need to find a way to turn it around. They are in dire straits right now. All right. Next question is from Wang Lord, and I'm going to summarize because he's he put it in 400 paragraphs, but I know exactly what his point was. He's criticized me about this from time to time, and I said, you know what, it's time to legitimately address this, so let's go for it. Wang Lord basically says the following. This is his summary, my summary, my paraphrasing him. You have mentioned in the past that you do get anger. You have anger issues, and you say things in the moment every once in a while, whether it's on Twitter or in a vlog, that you may not fully mean later. Like, maybe you say today that game sucks, and tomorrow you say, all right, it doesn't suck, I just find it boring, but it doesn't suck, okay? Perfect example, I did this yesterday. On Twitter, I said, I'm disappointed because this week, Drakengard and Transistor, I played them both, and they both suck. Now, of course, I said that because I'm trying to get it within the character limit of Twitter. The truth is, I don't think Transistor's a bad game. I think the graphics are great, the, the, the art design, the music, voice acting, all that's great. I think the combat's boring and repetitive. So, it's not a horrible, boring sh game that sucks, but I was trying to summarize that I don't like it on Twitter. But people will take that, oh my god, he says the game sucks, what a hypocrite, he like Bastion from the last game from these guys, he doesn't like this one, fuck him, right? And this is what Wangler is trying to make the point of. When I say things quickly or abruptly or in the moment or with emotion, I may say them in a way that isn't really conveying my point properly, okay? So his question is this. Do you ever think about taking a step back and isolating yourself from social media when these things happen to avoid people taking things that you say the wrong way or as literal fact when you really mean it as something else? And here's the thing. I said this before and I'll say it again. I'm the realest motherfucker on the internet. I don't hold back. I don't pull punches. Now, a lot of the times, things that I say, things that I've said in this show, Ask the King, have been off base because it's based off of what people are telling me in the question. People giving me information in a question and I'm just that's the first thing at time I've heard of that topic and I give you my off-the-cuff answer because I'm going off the information if the information's wrong of course my my answer is going to be ridiculously uninformed there's going to be other times when I have an opinion on something and if I don't like it I'll say it the bottom line is a lot of people are saying oh Phil but don't you see that this how all these people on the internet that are saying that they don't like you anymore it's because you've said these things over the years and it's gotten to them and they don't want to follow you anymore First of all, what the fuck does that have to do with the content that I put out? Zero. Goose fucking A. If I'm daily putting out playthroughs for you that are entertaining, that I'm getting through the games, they're fun, they're still just as informative as they used to be, pertaining on what kind of gameplay a game is, if it's fun or not, what the fuck does it matter if I said that I don't like something over here in a random vlog? Zero. 
But this is the problem with the internet, is that people love to be drama queens. They love to be little teenagers who find one little thing, and let's make that the the entire existence of this person on the internet, when really and it's just something that was said in passing, or maybe something that was said with the motion that wasn't meant. There's plenty of things I've said over the years that I'm sure people either took the wrong way, or I said it the wrong way. It was I was pissed at the moment, and I said something, and later on I said, man, I should have said that a different way. Absolutely. But I've got over 30,000 fucking videos on the internet. Do you think that I can take stock of what I've said and tell you every single point I've ever made? What was 100% true? Did I say it the wrong way? No. And what Wang Lord is suggesting is, why don't you just step away from social media? Don't do vlogs. Don't go on Twitter. Don't do those things. And just make your gameplay and maybe it'll clear up. No. For two reasons. Because I'm the realest motherfucker on the internet and I will say what I want to say. And if people don't like it, it's your problem, not mine. If you're so offended that someone said a random thing on the internet that you can't ever watch anything they're ever involved in ever again, which, by the way, I can't imagine what that would be considering I'm not racist, I'm not bigoted, I'm not sexist, I don't insult, you know, certain groups of people or whatever. The most I've said is I don't understand why people like this certain game. How could people spend all their time wasting it on this certain game? Yeah, because I don't like those games. If you are so fucking sensitive that you will never watch my content again because I said that, I can't change that, you know? That's you, not me. I've been like this since I got on the internet in 2008 and started making these kind of videos, right? So, and to me, for me to be disconnected, all right, so I'm going to not even use Twitter or anything. So no one will know what's going on with my content. Uh, no one will know what's going on with my move. No one will know what's... No. Bullshit. I said this months ago. I am not going to ever get to a point where I say I'm shutting myself off from the internet and my fans and my viewers because I know that there's, it may be a small group, but there's a group of intelligent people on the internet who understand that you don't have to take offense at everything someone says, that someone might say something in a way they don't necessarily mean, and they might want to, you know, later, later on when they're not so emotionally into it that they may, may either take it back or say it in a different way. And I've done that in the past, okay? I don't have time to do it on every pot fucking thing I've ever said in my life, but I understand that there are times when anger gets to me or I'm frustrated over something, right? And there's also times when people just take what I say out of context just to make me look bad, and I can't change that either. That doesn't mean I'm going to stop doing what I'm doing. Yeah, there's going to be an increasing group of people who are immature, who can't understand that, and they just take the one or two points that I've said, and that's it. I hate Phil. Fuck them. Goodbye and good riddance. I don't need those kind of people. I need intelligent people who know what I'm about, who know that I'm honest, who know that I'm here to entertain you, to give you honest information when I talk about something, that I'm not paid off by any third party to skew what I say, that I'm not going to hold my tongue and not be honest about my feelings about something because I'm afraid I'm going to lose followers and views. Fuck it. I'll lose the followers and views if I can be true to myself. That's how I've always been. That's how I'm always going to be. So no, Wang Lord, I'm not going to censor myself. I'm not going to stay away from social media because the bottom line is it should be these butthurt fucking pansies that stop whining and being little immature kids on the internet and realize to be an immature adult that there's going to be people that you don't agree with. There's going to be statements that are going to be said out of context. Maybe you should stop believing the bullshit, right? And understand that I am a fallible human. I never stood up here and said, I am Jesus Christ. I am infallible. I am, you know, uh, the person who you should 100% only listen to what I say and nobody else. Never did I ever say any of that, right? So for people to take it that way and twist it into that and make me look like the bad guy because maybe I said some things with emotion or in a way that maybe, you know, maybe sound insulting if you're like a super fanboy of something and I say I don't like it. Tough titty. Fine. Goodbye. Go make, go... Join your group of people who think it's funny to be a little schoolgirl who dances around with your gossip about how DSP said something f down and insulted everyone. Go ahead. You can be immature and go somewhere else. You know, I, 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 this is what it is, is that years ago I did this, and because I was one of the newcomers on the Internet, this is becoming a new thing, being able to vlog, being able to voice your opinions. People respected me for being honest, for being real. Now a new generation of people have stepped up who they don't like that. They want perfectionist gamers. They want people who agree with everything they have to say. They want people who are generic, who don't, aren't a voiced and opinionated. They want people who are like cookie cutter bullshit to be successful on the internet. Then I won't be super successful on the internet. I'll be me and I'll be okay with that. How about that? I'm true to myself and that's what I'm cool with. Okay. Next question. He says, hey, Phil, my name is Julian, and I'm from Romania. 
in the last episode of Ask the King, you mentioned that you have like 100 t-shirts left from Project 7. I was wondering if you would give them away for your fans like you gave away the PS4 and other things recently. Thanks for answering and keep up the work that you do. Many of you watching this may not even know what the hell Project 7 is. Because Project 7 now has been defunct for about two years. It was a series that I creatively brainstormed. Uh, based off of a series I had done way back in 2010. It was going to be a live action uh, gaming comedy web series that involved all different things from different gaming genres. You know, shooting, RPGs, fighting games. All kinds of stuff was going to be involved with this series. And... We filmed four episodes of it. It was well-received, meaning every episode got over 100,000 views. Some got ridiculously more than that. It was basically kind of almost going viral to the point where people were like, if they wanted the next episode, when is this going to continue? We heard you have great plans. We'd like to see a season come out and you could sell it on DVD, yada, yada, yada. Unfortunately, halfway through the series, uh, my crew uh, was not able to progress with the series. The people who were working on this who were eventually, or who were originally looking to kind of get some internet popularity for themselves for being the guys who filmed and edited the series, they were called Respect the Pack, didn't really get what they were looking for out of the project, then other personal stuff came up in their lives that was more important than them putting hours and hours into the series, and they dropped out. The bottom line is that I haven't been able to find anyone like them who would be willing to invest time and money into re redoing this series. So the series just ended after four episodes, which was kind of a letdown because we had all these ideas for gaming worlds to go into. We'd only done two so far. And I had props. I literally still today have two boxes of props to my left. And I have a, a huge prop over here to my right. Things that I had bought to use in this series that I will never get to use now. And it is what it is, right? That's life. Things happen. Sometimes they're successful. Sometimes they're not. The series probably would have been continuously successful if I kept doing it. But I didn't get to keep doing it. But at the time. Uh, I purchased, well, it was a joint investment. Myself, Howard, both invested some money into t-shirts for this series, okay? T-shirts which we wanted people to be able to buy at like a convention. You come see us at a convention, we'll sign whatever you want. If you want a t-shirt, well, you, you can buy one, we'll sign it too. Problem was, we only went to two conventions with these t-shirts ever. The first convention was the debut of the series, so no one knew what the hell it was and no one wanted to buy a t-shirt yet. The second convention we went to, we did sell a bunch of t-shirts, but then the series ended. <laughs> so it was like, the first opportunity was, it was MAGFest, it was too early. The se I'm sorry, was it MAGFest? I think it was. And the second opportunity was too many games, and then the series ended, so no one wants the shirts anymore. I've literally got a box of like 100 shirts, I shit you not, there's like 100 shirts over here on my floor that I'll be taking with me to Washington State. And yes, once I get settled there... Uh, and I find out where the post office is and what the shipping options are. I will be giving away Project 7 shirts as occasional giveaways for people watching on stream and people watching videos and stuff like that. So, yeah, I have a ton of them and I will be giving them away in the future. That's what happened with that. Okay. Next question. Uh, this one is from Jaws0014. And he says, I've decided to take the next step in my life, moving out of my parents' house and finding my own place. My question is this. What advice can you give for anyone looking for their first accommodation? Well, hope I can help you out here because my first accommodation outside my parents' house was college. Then I went back to my parents' house. Then I got a three-room apartment with two co-workers of mine and a job. Then I went back to my parents' house. Then I came to this condo, and now I'm finally moving to a nice big place in Washington, okay? I'm going to give you the best advice I could give you. Number one, you have to live within your means, all right? Just because right now it looks like you're making money and you can afford a place, don't go above your budget. Don't say, oh, I'm expecting to make this amount of money in the near future. Budget yourself off of what you're making now because you never know what's going to happen. One of the things that happened with me was when I got that apartment with two other people, I lost my job and I had no money and I had to rack up my credit cards to pay the rent and pay all my bills and everything for several months until I got another job and it took me years to get out of that credit card debt. So make sure whatever you're doing, you don't go above your means. Stay within your means. I know it's an exciting time in your life. Oh, I'm moving out of my parents' house. I should get myself a big TV and a laptop and this and that. Don't do it. That's the slippery slope. You're going to go right into financial debt. And unless you get a big success in, in, in what you're doing for work, how are you going to get yourself out of it, right? Uh, be sure... When every place you get to that you know exactly what you're getting into. What are you responsible for? Are you renting? If you're renting, are you paying for the gas? Are you paying for the electricity? Are you paying for the water or some of that included in the rent? Are there 
fees, like if you're renting a condo, are there homeowner's fees you need to pay? What's included? If you don't, if you walk into a situation and don't know what's included, you could get hit with tons of bills on the back end that you never saw. They blindsided you, and now again, you're in financial straits, right? And then last but not least, I have to say this because this is something that I find every place I've ever lived, this has been an issue. If you're living in a complex like this building, okay, because let's face it, apartments that are share, a shared building are a lot cheaper than, say, getting a house. I don't know what your financial means is right now. It sounds to me, if you're moving out of your parents' place for the first time, you're probably going to end up in an apartment like this. Be respectful of your neighbors, because so many people move into a place like this and they think, oh, this is my house. So I'm going to have 400 people over. We're going to have a fucking dance party slamming on the... We're going to blast the fucking music. We're going to be yelling, screaming, drinking, being on our back porch drunk as fuck, yelling at people. It's obnoxious. It's disgusting. And it can get you into trouble. Okay? There's a few people here who got very close to being evicted in the time that I've lived here for shit that they tried to pull. My next door neighbor is an alcoholic and never stops drinking. Every time I see him, he's stumbling around. Sometimes he's on the back porch yelling. When I first moved in, one night my friends and I were sitting on the back porch and this neighbor was so fucking drunk. He's like, fuck you kids, fuck you, get the fuck out, fuck, fuck, fuck. I basically told him if he didn't shut the fuck up, I was going to crawl to his unit, beat him to within an inch of his life. And basically fucking, you know, that'll put him in his place. Of course, he didn't shut up because he was a belligerent drunk. So then I told him I would call the cops. Oh, okay. And then he went inside. <laughs> so you got to understand, if you live in an apartment like this, you, you are sharing space. The walls are not fucking triple insulated. Be understanding of your neighbors, all right? And you'll be good. The last thing you want to do is get into trouble constantly for making noise, for doing shit. And that's another thing to consider. When you're looking at places... Do you want to be on the ground floor where people, you're going to hear them walking around all the time? Do you want to be on the top floor where people might complain about you walking around all the time? These are all the things you have to put into consideration when you're moving into a new place. Okay. All right. So let's do one more question and then we'll take a quick break and we'll move on to the next part here of Ask the King. This one is from Crusader and Crusader asks the following. He says, well, Phil, I have loved a, a variety of your playthroughs since your original series of Fallout 3 in 2008. Since I have to watch many games of, of various types from you, I wanted to know what type of game you enjoy playing the most. Do you enjoy fighting games like Street Fighter, because that's part of your roots? Do you enjoy RPGs like Child of Light, which you played recently and I loved? Is there another genre that you like the most? Thanks for your awesome playthroughs throughout the years. Um, the bottom line is this. There is no answer to that, because I am, or at least... Since my back injury kicked in, unfortunately, in 2007, and I started playing games a ton, I became a fan of the mainstream, but also now even more indie, a wide gamut, a huge range of games. I like action-style beat-em-ups if they're done right. I like games with a great story, so obviously that would be like an RPG, but also you got hybrids such as Mass Effect and Dragon Age where you get these cool dialogue options that change the story and characters over the course of the game. I love that. I love fighting games. Now, to some extent, I like more, of, more than others. I like the more classic one-on-one -on -one style fighting of, say, Street Fighter versus tagging in and out and multiple bullshit instant 100% combos that you've had in the more flashy fighters as of late. But I enjoy... The one-on-ones fighting style of a competitive game like Street Fighter. I still get my, my juices, my blood flowing when I see stuff like that and I want to play. I crave it from time to time. Um, but there's other things that I've liked. Shooters, uh, action-style combat games, turn-based uh, RPGs, right? Horror, survival horror. Recently I played a few, like Outlast. I am so happy I played Outlast and its recent DLC. Both were so good. Episodic, fun narrative games like The Walking Dead and The Wolf Among Us. Those are great. I'm just a fan of a wide variety of games. Recently, I became a huge fan of sports games like NBA and MLB, right? So I can't tell you there's one genre that I like the most, really, honestly. I can tell you this. It, it, it definitely accentuates my experience when I'm playing a game and liking it, and everyone else is too. So everyone's watching my content that stream. Uh, they're watching the videos on YouTube, and they like them. If you like it, I typically will have a better time with the game as well. But there are other times, like with recent RPGs, that I like the game more than the people watching, or the people watching are few and far between, but I still like the game to the point where I'm going to keep playing it. And JRPGs have kind of been that kind of game recently. Um, 
Overall, there's always going to be a style of game that I like to go back to, and it's probably going to be fighting games. It's probably going to be more action style and also turn-based RPGs. Yeah, I like sports games. Yeah, every once in a while I'll play a racing game, you know, but those aren't going to be the primary games that I like. Wow, I really want to go back to my roots and play that other stuff. So I don't have one genre that I definitively like. I've become a huge fan of so many different styles of games since I've done this whole thing on YouTube and Twitch. Um, I become more appreciative of the wide variety of games that are out there, which is why you don't see me be a one-trick pony. There's a lot of YouTubers. I just play the first-person shooters. I just play Call of Duty and Battlefield. Or I just play fighting games, Street Fighter and whatever, and that's all they do. That's not what I'm about. I'm about being a jack-of-all-trades and a master of few. I would say probably games like Street Fighter, if I dedicate time to them, I can get really good at them. And there are other genres that I've dedicated time and gotten pretty good at them. Like JRPGs, okay, turn-based RPGs. I'm pretty good at those games. But outside of that, I don't really invest enough time to get good. Could I? Probably, but I'm not investing that amount of time because I want to experience the wide gamut of stuff that's out there, okay? All right, time for a short break. I'll be right back. If you're watching on Twitch, please stick around. It's going to be a short commercial break. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm going to end the video here, and you can just move right along to the next part on YouTube. Thanks. I'll be right back. <laughs> 